So these have been the three, three of the, the, the major parties and all of them have been in basic agreement about the, the three goals of the of transition market you know with more social or less social benefits um, uh, Europe and uh, uh, you know uh, democracy right and they you know there has been a consensus and a fairly civilized way of running politics but also with downsides so let's look at some of these, some of the recent elections when things have started to change for several reasons, reasons that by now should be familiar. Okay. Uh, so let's start with the 2007 elections, the first ones that I posted on uh, on, uh, on Blackboard. Uh, have the uh, typical um, uh, 2007 presidential election, right? Remember, president elected for five, uh, lower house for four. Uh, 2007 uh, won by a uh, coalition. No, no, notice, interestingly enough, that both presidents are actually independents. They're not members of parties, which tells you again, it hints at the fact that this is a parliamentary system because the president is supposed to be above politics. However, there are parties that support them, but they're coalitions. Social Democrats, the pensioners, and others. This one, also independent, supported mostly by the center right, SDS, and so on, uh, and others. Um, won by the center left backed uh, 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 independent uh, lawyer, by the way. So you see the judicial part, uh, just like in Hungary, the president is supposed to stand for the laws, and so on. And in fact, Daniel Turk. Um, he uh, will also try to run in the next presidential election, but no longer supported by the center left. So you see, he was an independent. Right? He was an independent. But again, a hint that this is a parliamentary system. Okay. Um, then you have the 2008 National Assembly elections, and this is where it becomes interesting. Because what is going on in 2008, right? Notice that you, you see already the the important actors that have been around since uh, since the since the 90s right the social democrats on the center left the Slovenian democratic party on the, on the center right sds i'm just going to use sds a new part a fairly new party new politics <laughs> implicitly tells you what it is uh, the pensioners and some and some others this is also one of the original uh, opposition and the communist opposition fragments that through Norway. So you see them uh, around, but what is going on? And notice Hungarian and Italian national communities have two seats reserved. Uh, what is going on uh, be, um, around this time and especially after 2008? Well, what is 2008? It is the time of the great economic crisis which hit Slovenia very brutally. Now, understand that Slovenia at this point has, was a very stable both economically and you know, politically country. It has already adopted the euro. Uh, its living standards were around the you know, level of Austria and so on. So, you know, Slovenia was one of the most successful transition cases you know, by the early 2000s. However, 2008 hits them very, very badly. Because many of the large corporations in Slovenia and banks and so on were actually living on debt. They were actually built uh, their business on massive, massive debt. And when the debt dried out, the whole thing collapsed. This was also accompanied in between this election and the next with major corruption scandals. Sounds familiar? Yes. Notice that we have had the same major parties since the 90s, the same leaders. Well, you know what happens. If the same elites are in power, they become, and during the transition to market economy, privatization, all these things, right, you will have the issue of corruption, of political economic interests being intertwined, shady, and so on. And also the fact that people get tired with seeing the same faces in politics over and over again. And all of these, you know, reach, uh, you know, uh, their climax around this time between 2008 and 2012, around the time of 2000, right, 10, where we've seen it's this, you know, 2008, 2010 is this uh, moment where in all these countries you saw 
uh, a popular or pop, uh, a popular op, uh, you know, um, reaction, um, a sort of a throw out the bombs reaction to the existing status quo. I call it democratic fatigue. Of course, it is linked to the fact that there was an economic crisis, but there has been an economic fa uh, democratic fatigue or rather post transition fatigue, right? Again, the same idea of you know 1989 for them it was 1992 basically. What did it mean and did it get us what we wanted? And we're not in paradise yet, okay? You see it here as well. This 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 recalibration, reconsideration of the entire tra transition that we're not there yet. And these politicians, uh, you know, I don't trust them. What's the point of voting? You see, all of this cynicism towards politics, all of this disaffection of the population and the gap between the population and the political elite, which we have seen in all the other countries, which have generated the latest election in Poland with the Law and Order Party sweeping in. And by the way, if you follow the news, they are introducing reforms that look very much like Fidesz's reforms after it has swept the elections in 2010. There is the traditional Hungarian-Polish relationship, cultural alliance and brotherhood in action there. So anyway, coming back here, all of these phenomena will also play out in Slovenia. Will also play out as if they have played out in Central Europe and partially in Eastern Europe, like you know Romania and Bulgaria. You see that Slovenia is more part of that sphere than uh, former Yugoslavia in many ways. Um, so what happens is that the, uh, at this point, the, so who won the election in 2008? That, so central left, social democrats, which entered into coalition with the pensioners and this new, uh, new party. Um, and the prime minister is Borut Pahor, who you've heard of, uh, already his name, uh, from the social democrats. However, he will be removed through a vote of no confidence, the first since the establishment of Slovenia. So a vote of no confidence by the National Assembly, so it tells you about the political crisis. So he is removed in 2011. And this whole, you know, all these, there was a whole wave of corruptions, the whole conundrum and, and uh, disaffection and uh, dissatisfaction with the fact that the, the, it was felt that the government was either not doing enough or doing too much regarding the whole economic crisis that really, really hit Slovenia really hard. And which was really brutal because they had a very well, very high level of, uh, of existence, uh, economic level, and so on. Uh, and all this general dissatisfaction and the corruption scandals and poor opinion of government performance leads to a vote of no confidence and to the rise of new political actors. Um, he is removed by one vote of no confidence, but uh, another social democratic politician is, uh, so that they don't get a technocratic government, they get another social democratic, uh, more, better, uh, you know, uh, so to speak, better looking. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, actually a, a, a lady, uh, Bratusek, Alenka Bratusek, she becomes Prime Minister and she actually introduces some very radical, and she's social democrat, she introduces some very strong austerity measures, right? Which means what? Which means measures cutting uh, government spending severely, uh, tightening the belt, reforming those banks, because the Bolo Paho social democrats, you know, then being more lenient about, you know, uh, providing benefits, they did not do those measures and the whole situation was just getting worse and worse. So anyway, before the 2012 election, which is actually 2011 of course, because you had the vote of no confidence, um, you have uh, new parties arising. New parties arising, completely new parties, so there's this, you know, ch major change in the status quo. Um, changing the existing party system, which has been stable since the 90s. And notice what parties are formed. Positive Slovenia, you see, there is no ideological identity there, it's positive Slovenia. And linked to a person, Zoran Janković's list. So it's one of these personalistic parties, you remember in Poland you saw the same thing. And guess what, he is a businessman, former best, uh, handball star, uh, um, and, and, for, and, and very popular mayor of Ljubljana, which is the capital. Uh, so it's around him that this party forms again. The new face, the new guy, the outsider, the new non-political guy, right? It's already successful in sports, in business, whatever. Positive Slovenia. And notice that not only it is formed, guess what, two months before the election, but it actually wins the elections. 
it wins the elections. And not, it's not the only one, because you also have the Citizens' Alliance. Again, what sort of an ideology is the Citizens' Alliance? We don't know. Citizens' Alliance of Gregor Vinan. So, again, formed around the first scenario. Gregor Vinan is a, um, uh, let's see, he's, he's a journalist, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, again, sounds familiar? The Czech Republic, Poland, yes. Non status quo, non politicians. We're tired of politicians, we need new faces. Think of the new government of, in Romania, the technocratic government bringing in civil society. This whole idea that you know, non political will be a solution, but once you enter politics, you will become political, won't you? And you will have to play by the rules of politics, won't you? Because that's the nature of politics, right? But it's part of this learning process, learning democracy, how democracy works, learning the multi-party system, but also being able to remove the politicians in power who have exploited and misused their, their, their presence in the political elite for economic benefits. So notice, normally uh, the positive Slovenia gets a plurality, not a majority of course, but normally they should form the government. So indeed, the president, uh, who at this point is still Danilo, Danilo Turk, um, asks Zoran Jankovic to form the government, but here's the thing with these anti-status quo uh, uh, forces. If they don't get the majority, since they ran against the entire status quo, all the others versus the others, how can you form a coalition government? And he can. And here's where the rules of politics need to be understood. But it's not because it's Central Eastern Europe. I gave this example before. What is the institution with the lowest approval rating in the United States? It's Congress, which is the heart of democracy which is what the framers established as the most powerful branch, by the way, not the president, which is non-democratic, right, in, 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 in many ways. Like, by the way, not even directly elected to the president. So Congress, why? Because they're always fighting. Well, that's the point of a parliament, that the conflict inherent in a society is fought not on the streets, but in an institution that has rules uh, of dialogue, debate, and that produces common action. But you see, even in the United States, which considers itself an established democracy, it's still the population wants a strong leader, right? It wants solutions. And from one guy, that's not very democratic, is it? Right? It's natural in human nature to, to so it's not because it's Central Europe, Eastern Europe and transition, because it's a common feature. However, uh, there are dimensions that have to do with transitioning and, and kind of learning the process and kind of establishing the process and being continuously dis disappointed with it. Another aspect of American politics is that we, everybody has, a, that Congress as an institution has tremendously low approvals, but the individual representatives have very high approval in their district. So my guy is good, it's the rest who are bad. Um, so anyway, so back here, uh, so he doesn't manage to, to form a coalition, which is the game of politics. Uh, so, uh, so the president uh, but the president, who remember was proposed by the center uh, left, he doesn't really want to propose the next one, Janez Jansha from the center right. However, in Slovenia, there's also the possibility of uh, members of National Assembly to propose to nominate a potential prime ministerial uh, candidate, and they do that with Janez Jansha, and this being a established politician, he knows how to make coalitions, so it's actually the center-right that will form the party with, again, the pensioners, you see, they can easily form a coalition with whoever, this new party, uh, Citizens' Alliance, and Slovenian People's Party. And there you have it, you have a center-right government. And you're going to say, okay, done, that's, that's all conclude this discussion, but no. Um, Janez Janša, who has been around in politics since the 90s, are the leaders of the center-right, Guess what? Janez Jansha, one year after he becomes PM in 2012, he is not only removed, but he's accused of corruption and actually thrown into jail. And it's uh, one of the few and first, although in Romania the former Prime Minister also got that, but he's, you know, basically a sitting Prime Minister who loses his position because of these corruption accusations, is actually prosecuted and thrown into jail and he was condemned for 10 years of prison because of corruption, okay, and that's in 2013, and it, that doesn't help to with the confidence of the people in the whole political uh, um, uh, political sphere, uh, with, with the political uh, sphere, it doesn't, does it, does it, no, it does not, so, um, 
Uh, okay. Meanwhile, in 2012, you have another presidential election um, we, in which, as you see, the existing the incumbent runs as independent. Uh, the center left proposes their former PM as kind of candidate, and then the center right also has it their candidate, and in the end, it's the center left candidate who wins. Uh, so the former PM from the center left has been around for a while, and now is the president, and is still the president from the center left. Okay. So anyway, Yanis Yansha, back to Yanis Yansha, center right, um, loses his prime ministership. The coalition falls, falls apart, right? And so the, you need to form a new government. 2013. This is just a year and a half after the election. So you need a government is formed, and this time with the other side. So positive Slovenia finally gets into the to form a government with the Social Democrats um, uh, and with uh, Desus. Uh, and um, who else? Anyway, and with Desus, uh, with the, uh, with the, and with Slovenian People's Party. So these, and this, and this, so the other side. <laughs> with plus those who can ally themselves with, with whoever. Basically, the center left and the new party, the Post Slovenia, forms the government. Now you ask, how could they form a government? After the, the center right was removed, right? The Prime Minister Yanis Yanis is removed. Um, through vote of the uh, continents, how can they form a government? Uh, since previously they couldn't. Well, guess what? Zoran Yankovic, the founder of his party, steps aside because he was the guy who didn't want to get aligned with others. He's the you know revolutionary. So this is when actually um, uh, Alenka Bratusek, I made a mistake. Alenka Bratusek from the from the from the, the positive Slovenia becomes prime minister, and that's in 2013. Um, but this coalition also falls apart. <laughs> also falls apart because Zoran Yankovic, this uh, you know leader of the anti-system leader, comes back in 2014, removes Alenka Bratusek from the leadership of this party. She has to resign as a PM, and early elections are called. That's in 2014. So you see a period of turmoil. When the center right government is in power, the prime minister is thrown in jail, good. Then center left in this new party, but not with the leader of this new party, but someone else is in power. They introduce some you know, strict austerity reforms, but the leader of this new party comes back and tries to do some revolution uh, and so on. But, um, uh, uh, you know, she, she, she doesn't have the support of the party because the leader of the party came back. So, early elections are called, but understand, I mean, imagine yourself being, you know, a Slovenian citizen and watching all this take place. This is in the midst of the needs for dire reforms in, you know, creating one of those bad banks, reforming the banking system, need to, you know, people hurting because of these measures of austerity that were introduced by that lady Prime Minister, Alenka Bratusek, and so on. Uh, so, Plus, this new, you know, uh, this new positive Slovenia party didn't turn out to be that positive. <laughs> they couldn't form coalitions because they wanted to reform everything, but it, they actually fall apart uh, and so on. So, 2014, you have um, uh, uh, early elections. Uh, meanwhile, Zoran Jankovic himself is embroiled into a corruption. Uh, a scandal. So the leader of this reformist party, as it happened, I think it was Poland, right? When the same thing happened, uh, when that journalist who came in you know, to clean the whole system, he was basically caught into, into a, in a corruption affair. Well, that happens with also with Zoran Yanku, which remember had been a successful businessman, mayor of Ljubljana. He's been part of the elite, if not the top elite, but one elite. Anyway, that too. Uh, so positive Slovenia, right? Uh, uh, the leader is, is uh, 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 you know, also embroiled in a corruption affair. So you have 2014 coming up, and who are you going to vote for, right? All of these people I have tried, right? Social Democrats we have been tried. So as uh, uh, SDS center right has been tried. The leaders were thrown in jail. Actually, he campaigned from jail. He remained leader of the party, and Yanis Yansha campaigned from jail. That's fine. Um, and then. Um, you have this positive Slovenia turning out not so positive and fragmented and whatever as it happens with populist movements that don't have a clear ideology, as we well know. So, uh, what? Then what? And guess what? 
uh, six weeks, six weeks before the election in 2014, a new party is formed by Miro Chera. Miro Chera, who is, uh, has been uh, sort of an expert, sort of a technocrat, by the way, right? But he forms a party, so he doesn't, you know, can't run as a technocrat. Uh, and he's been a sort of a legal expert around parliament. But he forms a party in which he literally recruits all people from civil society, so non-political, non-elite, people who have proven their, uh, their, their uh, abilities uh, in the civil society, or maybe at European level. Sounds familiar with what's happened recently in Romania? Yes, it does. Uh, although that's technocratic government. This is a party that is formed by Miro Cera in six weeks before the election and it sweeps the elections. It gives you a sense of the popular dissatisfaction with the entire political elite. And this is Slovenia, where life is good. Um, so, they win 34.5% uh, uh, of the vote, 36 of the 92 seats, they do need to enter in the coalition, and of course they're going to enter with the pensioners and uh, the party, party, and also with the social democrats who notice the huge, uh, you know, fall of the social democrats. Six seats. This used to be one of the important parties in the system. Now the center right still is doing well. You know, second party, second party in power, right? Uh, then you have a completely, well, not new, but new in parliament, United Left. You see a sort of an anti-system extreme left party. Uh, and, uh, uh, New Slovenia, the alliance of Alenka Bratusek, which is a, which is a um, um, uh, uh, spin-off from the positive Slovenia, and there it is, very beautiful, positive Slovenia, not so positive, they won the previous election, the plurality now there is zero, uh, at minus 38, so to speak, with 3%, so that's, uh, you know, the high mind. Um, and uh, I also include the Slovenian People's Party, which is an, an extreme right party, which doesn't make it in the parliament, well, more so than extreme, doesn't make it in the parliament. Uh, the Pirate Party, which is an interesting phenomenon present, I think we saw it in Czech, Czech, uh, Czech Republic, but also in the Western Europe. Um, there's a new party here, New Slovenia. New party, new party, new party. Okay? And new party. And at this point, that's what's going on. Mirochera, it's a, actually a functioning government. They have, you know, they have chance. You can't have a Mirochera party. That's, that's not a party, right? So they change the name into Party of Modern Center, which still says nothing. Or maybe it says that there are, maybe it illustrates this uh, uh, sort of a, a anti status quo uh, position, also from the sense of we are beyond the traditional ideologies, right? We need solutions, and that's his idea, and I posted some materials about that, that the, this party should combine everything that works to make things work. That sounds very technocratic for me, but it is, you know, the sort of post-ideological binary, post-binary thing that, okay, you need to be either left or right, you need to do what works. And they, you know, for example, Miro Cerales, who is the Prime Minister, he is, uh, you know, he opposes uh, the, national, the privatization of important national companies like the telecom, uh, telecommunication one at the airport, the national airport, but on the other hand he is imposing, he is introducing austerity measures and, and you know, uh, banking reform and so on. So it's a mix of things. It, it's not easy to categorize and it's, perhaps it's good. Perhaps solutions in real life cannot be categorized so neatly. Okay. Um, so, uh, generally speaking then, uh, we have talked about the major issues. That, that, you know, have led to this change in status quo, to this, uh, you know, sort of a new, new uh, wave of politics in, in Slovenia. They, they must sound familiar, disaffection with the political elite, corruption, uh, um, you know, uh, post-transition fatigue, uh, economic crisis. Uh, again, we have discussed these, and you see them here, but you don't see the problems that we discussed in Bosnia and Herzegovina, do they? So, you see the problems that we discussed in the case of Central Europe and Eastern Europe. Right? Um, a few words to conclude about Slovenia's foreign affairs. Slovenia is a trusted partner for uh, everyone, basically. It has always been considered a stable uh, society, so not like Bosnia, not like Serbia, not like uh, Croatia, in the sense that those are, you know, still kind of post-war, uh, well, post-Yugoslav societies, uh, especially uh, the farther east you go, the more it is so. 
Um, although recently Montenegro was invited to join NATO, by the way. But anyway, Slovenia has been part of the European Union since 2004, of NATO since 2004, uh, generally respected, trusted, and so on. I added a uh, so, member of all these uh, uh, you know, uh, important uh, international uh, uh, trans supranational organizations, which have been the destination of all the centuries to European countries after the regime change in 1989. Uh, a final word on um, a material that I posted regarding the post-Yugoslav situation, where it sees that you see that there is a post-Yugoslav dimension still. Uh, there is a slight, uh, not border, but maritime waters dispute between Slovenia and Croatia, which has not been settled. And it has to do with uh, because they're so close to each other, and there is a Gulf there in the Mediterranean, um, de delineating. Uh, um, uh, the territorial waters uh, is, is always a matter of negotiation. You can't just apply the arbitrary rule, which is usually always three miles and then uh, whatever, 22 miles and so on, because these overlap. Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, they're too close. And there's this gulf, so how do you draw the line, right? It doesn't work, right? Because they overlap, right? If you measure three miles there, three miles there, so 20 there, 20 there, they actually overlap, so you have to decide on a common delineation line. Since Slovenia has a, a small uh, exit to the sea compared to Croatia, which has a uh, thousand and something miles of uh, coast, um, it really wants to, to have significant uh, access there. So there's this dispute that is going on, there's more going on, uh, which is posted on camera. So, anyway, that's a review of Slovenia, this central European post Yugoslav country. <laughs>